Hi everyone and welcome to the Zcast. I'm Mr. Z. Today we're going to be talking about the topic of density. When we talk about the topic of density, there are three things that we need to look at. The first one is the definition of the word density. The second one is how do we calculate it? And then number three, how does density affect the properties of a material? So first of all, let's talk about what density is. Density simply stated is how tightly packed the molecules of matter are. Well, to figure that out, all we need to know is how many molecules or particles there are and how much space they're taking up. So to measure how many there are, we would do something known as measure the mass. The mass of an object is the amount of material in it. Well, that's pretty easy to do. We take our triple beam balance, put our object on the balance and measure its mass. Now, mass and weight aren't exactly the same thing. Some of you might think that they are. Your weight happens when you stand on a scale and your body squeezes that scale between the bottom of your feet and the earth. And it squeezes it because the earth pulls your mass down with gravity. Well, the balance is a little bit different because you have something on each side of the balance that gravity that pulls down on both sides of the balance is going to cancel out whatever happens to be there. So gravity cancels out gravity. All we're left with is mass. All right. So we have mass, which is the amount of matter in an object. We take that mass and we find out how much space it takes up. Well, the amount of space an object takes up in three dimensions is known as volume. To measure volume, if we have a regularly shaped object, we can simply measure the length, the width and the height of the object. And then we multiply those out. So if we measure it in centimeters, we'd end up with a centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. And that'd be a centimeter cubed. So a cubic centimeter, as you may hear them called. Also, sometimes people might say CC, like on a medical TV show, they'll call out, a doctor might call out for 30 CCs of some chemical. Well, CC stands for cubic centimeter. And usually on a medical show, they're looking for a liquid, you know, in one of those bags they hang and drip into somebody's IV. Well, that CC, if it's a liquid, why don't they just say milliliter? because they're the same thing. A milliliter of water, if we could put it in a perfect cube, would equal one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So one milliliter of water is equal to one cubic centimeter. Okay, well why do we need to know that? Because if we don't have a regularly shaped object, like a little block of wood that has a perfect 90 degree angle on every corner, we might have to take the object and use what's known as the overflow or displacement method. Take an object, stick it in some water, see how much water it displaces or how much the water rises. And that same amount of water in milliliters will be how many milliliters of material that that object takes up or um, milliliters of space. So we can calculate its volume. Once we measure the mass and we measure the volume, we're on to number two. Number two is how do we calculate density? Well, density is calculated by taking the amount of matter and dividing by the amount of space. Or we might say density is equal to mass divided by volume, or D equals M over V. So the M stands for mass, the V for volume. And if we divide those, we should be able to figure it out. So. Now that we know what density is and we know how to calculate it, the last thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how density affects the properties of a material. See, usually when people talk about density, they're talking about floating or sinking. They say, well, that object sank because it's dense or that object floated because it was more dense. But there's a few other concepts related here. Buoyancy is related and also something known as specific gravity. So if we take an object such as a boat made out of wood, we can measure the density of the wood and say, well, that wood should float because it's less dense than water. Well, that's because when you take a wooden object and you put it in water, it doesn't take as much water to displace the weight of the wood. So it sinks down into the water until a weight of water going up equals the weight of the little block of wood and then it floats. Well, if you take something that's a block the same size as the wood, same shape, and you make it out of metal, you put it in the water, the amount of water that it displaces doesn't weigh as much as the metal does, so the metal sinks. 
Well, that would be buoyancy, dealing with if something's denser than water, it can't displace its own weight, so it sinks. If something's not as dense as water, it can displace its own weight, so it'll float. Well, the last concept then would be specific gravity. Specific gravity is simply how low does that thing have to sink to displace its own weight. So we took a block of uh, wood and put it in water, and it sank so that exactly half of the block of wood got wet. We could estimate the density of the wood is half of whatever we put it in. So if we put it in water, and water's density is one gram per cubic centimeter, then that wood has a density of half of that, or 0 0.50. So what we would say then is if the wood's density is 0 0.50, every milliliter of that wood would have a mass of 0.5. See, we say its density is 0.5 grams per milliliter. Sort of like if you had a job and you made $8 per hour, you can figure out if you work two hours, you're going to make $16. Well, if you had two milliliters of that wood and each one was 0.5 grams, then two milliliters, one gram. Okay? So density, the density of an object is how much matter is packed into a certain space. The density of an object is determined by its mass divided by its volume, and the density of an object will determine whether it will sink or float in another liquid, depending on that liquid being more or less dense in itself. The last thing we need to talk about, though, is a common question we get about density. If I have a block of wood, and I take that block of wood and I cut it in half. Now, obviously, if I only look at half of it, I have half the mass, half the material. Well, then I also have half of the volume, because half the material only takes up half the space. The next question is, what did I do to the density? And the key here is that if we still look at how much we have, half as much mass, half as much volume, and we do the math again, the density is the same. You can't change the density of an object just by cutting it. That same amount of wood, we didn't make the wood expand or get closer together. Those particles are still the same compactness or same density. So density can't be changed simply by cutting something. Okay, well I hope this has really helped you out a little bit with density and join us next time we'll be looking at some information on solutions. For now, thanks for tuning into the Zcast. I'm Mr. Z. Have an awesome